Hello, everybody, and welcome to Talk to Internal Audit, a dedicated Facebook and YouTube live series. I'm Derek Jimison, Director of Regions for the Institute, and the subject of today's discussion is Data Analytics, or DA. This is our second Talk to Internal Audit session on DA, which goes some way to recognising the importance it has to us all. This is a subject that every internal auditor should have interest in, and indeed should be further developing their skills in just now. Quite simply, without being proficient at data analytics, we cannot be effective internal auditors. In reality, we never could have been. Today's guests are Caroline Durham from Anne Post in Ireland and Joe Morgan from Barclays. Caroline was actually a guest in our first Talk to Internal Audit session back in December 2020. Joe and I have been speaking on DA for over a year now, and it's fair to say that he and Caroline are both passionate advocates for the subject, and they certainly use DA in IA. So grab a cup of tea or coffee or a beverage of your choice and join me as we delve into data analytics or DA. Before we get into the stream, a couple of facts about the Institute for you to keep in mind. These will shortly appear on the screen for you. As you may be aware, you can acquire CPE points for these Talk to Intel Audit sessions by logging them using the CPE template on our website. Details of how to claim CPE from this live stream can be found in the comments section. Now to the main part of today. Every one of us has been involved in DA since we joined Internal Audit. My very strong opinion is this case. Sure, to begin with, we were possibly using spreadsheets to collate data, to total it, to reconcile it, to reconcile it against expected figures or to identify whether there were trends or unusual matters of concern. This was still data analytics, but it was just using the tools of the day. It was at lower level, and it certainly didn't use the tools that we have nowadays, which are much more extensive and much more valuable to us. Data itself is critical to us all nowadays. There's barely a decision made in any business, in any organization, which does not involve a greater use of data analytics than ever before. In 2006, Clive Humby, OBE, who supported Tesco to launch ClubCard, the world's first mass customization loyalty program, coined the phrase, data is the new oil. It's valuable, but if unrefined, it really cannot add value. It needs to be broken down and analyzed to have real value. Data is very much the same. To a great extent, it is exactly the same. However, unlike oil, it continues to increase. It's not finite, it's basically infinite. It will keep on increasing exponentially as the years go by. So the value that data has to an organization equally increases. Data drives organizations, and many will say that it's the blood that flows through the veins of the organizations they work in. Simply, poor quality data or poor use of data hinders and undermines decision-making. This will inevitably undermine the organization's sustainability, potentially fatally. Good quality data and good use of data is key to staying competitive and relevant in every sector. Excellent quality data and excellent analysis of data in an organization sets it apart from its peers and allows it to truly understand its position its customers, all stakeholders, and to identify opportunities for improvement or growth and proactively manage its future. It's as simple as that. Much of this is also true in relation to internal audit's use of data analytics. Simply speaking, the more we seek to utilize data in our work, the more value we derive from it. And obviously, if we derive that value, we transfer that value to the organization we work for. The adoption of data analytics with internal audit functions has progressed over many, many years. I've been an internal auditor for a very long time now, um, but it's been rapidly developing over the last few years. And it's only been a year since our data analytics working group was established, and we now have over 220 members of that group. All shapes and sizes of functions are in that data analytics working group. We have all levels of maturity. We have very, very significant audit functions. Joe represents one of them. And we're very small audit functions as well. It's very much about collaboration between us. Carolyn, as I said before, um, has been on this video talking about data before. She was also a founding member of the core group of that data analytics working group. And Joe has been with that group since the beginning as well. So we're trying to move the subject forward collectively. 
So a theme reminder before we go any further, if you're just joining us, welcome to our live stream talk to internal audit. Today's session is about data analytics, and I'm speaking with Caroline Derham from Anpost and Joe Morgan from Barclays. And we're going to discuss the progress that's been made on DA over the last year. How has it been achieved? How has the team developed? And the value that DA has, what value has DA derived for your organizations? We'll also, if we have time, take a quick look into the future and predict what we may achieve over the coming year. So we'll now start on reflections over the previous year. I'm going to ask Joe and Caroline just to introduce themselves briefly as, as I asked the first question as well, because I'm conscious they haven't actually seen you yet. You haven't seen them either. Our first focus is a reflection on the work that you've done over the last year and the successes you've achieved. And I know both the people here today have achieved successes. Caroline, good morning, or good afternoon, whatever. <laughs> um, Good to see you. Um, quick, quick, quick introduction from yourself and just a reflection on the last year's work, please. Thank you. Good morning, Derek, and good morning, everybody. And my name is uh, Caroline Darren. I'm one of the people here on the And I'm a very keen advocate uh, for data analytics, but as Derek has alluded to. Um, Sorry, I don't know if it's just me, but I can't I can't really hear you, Caroline. You've gone very quiet. Is, is it just me or, or Derek, are you saying? Yeah, it came and went, Joe, it came and went. I wasn't quite sure if it was just me. You have, you have gone quiet there, yeah. I think what we'll do is let me um, let me pause the recording and then we can um, take a look. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Let's resume. I'm going to go on mute now. Um, and then, yeah, a few seconds after that, Derek, if you just sort of want to jump back in. Um, uh, yeah, we'll do, just say sort of count three to five seconds and then... Uh, reintroduce Caroline. Uh, going Thank on you. mute now. Yes. So on to the main subject of today, data analytics and our guests. I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves as they as I introduce them. Um, and we're going to talk to Caroline first. Caroline, just a reflection on the last year's work. So how have you been going? What have you been doing? And what have you actually delivered? Good morning, Derek, and, and hi, everybody. Um, I'm Caroline Derham from um, Post, where I'm Head of Internal Audit. It's actually been a really exciting year, Derek. Um, I know we, we spoke last year uh, on, on the topic, and at that point, while I had lots of passion for data analytics, I didn't realise how beneficial it was going to be. Uh, and as the year has gone on, um, it's really been an accelerant uh, for the strategy we put in place uh, for Internal Audit and Post. So we've had a very exciting year. Sorry, everybody, I kept myself on mute there by accident. Uh, Caroline, good to hear the headline. Absolutely good to hear the headline. Any particular successes that you want to, to call out straight away? Yeah, great great successes, I suppose. Um, initially, we had uh, designed a setup where we'd use uh, data analytics in a continuous auditing program. And we've had great success with that program and have been able to roll it out across a number of uh, key core processes such as payable, procurement, um, and accounts receivable. And really, data analytics has been the really key enabler of that continuous auditing program. And what that meant for us is it saved us uh, a lot of time and resources from an auditing point of view so that we could really concentrate on other key risk areas of the business. Um, we also look to use data analytics as part of our standard uh, auditing program. And that's really uh, forced the team into reflecting on where they can use data analytics. And um, more and more we're seeing where we're probably at almost 100% of audits where we're using data analytics, which is really, really exciting. And primarily as part of that risk assessment process at the beginning of the audit. And, and as a result, we've had great success in identifying the risks and getting real quality recommendations out of the uh, audits that we've done, which have brought real value to the business but in turn brought an awful lot of work our direction as the business has now consistently reached out to audit to position new things on our audit plan, which has been really positive for us. I'm definitely going to come back to a couple of points there, Caroline. Certainly one of the points is about team, team development. And I think you used the word pushing or encouraging the team. Definitely going to come back to that. And again, about the engagement with your clients, your stakeholders, um, as they see the value, they ask for more. Uh, so I generally want to come back to that, Caroline. I'm going to introduce Joe now, uh, Joe from Barclays. Joe, hello. Uh, good to see you again. How has the last year been for you? Hi, Derek. Yeah, thanks. Um, 
the, the last year has been good. It's been very busy. It's been interesting. I mean, if, it, if I pick out a few focus areas for us, I mean, our priority has always been around how do we make data analytics just business as usual within our audits. And part of that is having people who, who understand what analytics is and able to identify how, how they're going to use it to provide assurance. But the other side of that is how do we make sure we have that capacity as well so that on every single audit, we have people who can code and can deliver that. Um, and really that focus is, is to drive a few things. One is to make sure that we can do more full population testing because where, where we've got 25 million customers or we've got these huge processes that ha operate very, very frequently, we don't want to be going in and sampling them. We want to be able to provide that assurance that it happens every single time, not just most of the time, right? So that's that's been our focus. Um, alongside that, there's been been a real drive for us on automation as well. So how can we how can we take data from across the bank and get it into our auditors' hands in a format that they can really make decisions based on it? And and like Caroline was saying there, it might be through the risk assessment piece. So, so in their risk assessment um, that they're doing of their auditable universe, or it might be directly into their, their audit tests that they're doing, doing as well. Um, and, and I guess kind of third, third focus area for us over this year has been what, what I like to call our expanding capabilities. And, and really what that is, is it's looking at areas that are traditionally quite hard to provide assurance using analytics. Um, that might be, say, unstructured data, or it might be um, a kind of very manual decision-making, judgmental processes, and and kind of targeting those and kind of brainstorming, doing proof of concepts to see, well, well, what analytics techniques can we bring in to internal audit? They may be established elsewhere in other industries, but how can we bring them into an internal audit and apply them in, in new ways there? So they're, they're my three focus areas for the last year. Thank you, Joe. I managed to get myself off mute very quickly there, so that's a success. Um, two or three things there, Joe. I'm going to come back to one of them straight away, but a couple of other things in terms of what you said there. That automation, increased automation across the team, if you like. I um, want to come back to that. And the cycle of the audit cycle, the risk assessment piece, I genuinely want to come back to that because I think from my perspective, getting it right, or getting it right, getting the focus as early as possible in the cycle is the best thing for everybody, to be honest. Um, but you talked about expanding capabilities and full population testing. So full population testing, is that something you started doing over the last year or is it something you've just evolved over the last year? So it's it's been something that we've evolved. So it's so in um so it's been a priority for us for a while to to where possible use data to do full population testing rather than rather than um, sampling those areas. Mm. I think I think what we've been able to really do over the last year is grow the capacity to be able to deliver that type of tests, right? So, so we, we, I guess, like a lot of other financial services organizations have, have a dedicated data analytics team within internal audit, but a lot of our focus is actually in, in teaching auditors to code as well, because at the end of the day, auditors have, well, I would say they have 95% of the skills that you need to deliver an analytics test we're going to top up that last last five percent of teaching them SQL or Python to be able to do it themselves. Actually, a lot of the other steps in that are the more challenging ones in terms of accessing data, designing your test, knowing, understanding what that data means, and kind of interpreting the results. They were already doing all of those steps. We're just adding that last kind of five percent of helping them to do the coding as well, um, and that's that's really built our capacity to be able to do that do that type of testing. Thanks, thanks, Joe. Uh, full population testing, Caroline, is that something you've managed to get hold of as yet? Yeah, no, absolutely, Derek. I mean, that's a really invaluable piece. Um, so we're doing that on our audits now. Um, so where we used to be auditors, where we used to say, show me the numbers, now we're saying, show me the data. So right up front at the beginning, we're trying to understand what the key data sets are. And we're doing, you know, really root and branch review of that data, get very comfortable with it, trying to see the patterns of what's happening. And then when we come to, to look at it, we're able to do whole population testing rather than those um, smaller samples in 30 or 40. Great. I'm going to pause for a second. Some people will watch this and I have talked to many, many people about data analytics, as you two do as well. Some people will be watching this and saying, but that's not my sector, my organization, et cetera. And we have two different organizations here on the line. I'm just wondering, just for 30 seconds, Joe, first, if you don't mind, just 
explain a little bit about what Barclays is? Some people have a perception it's a bank. Some people have a perception it's much, much wider than that. But could you just give a broad burst 30 seconds, please? Yeah, absolutely. So so Barclays, you can broadly split up into three three different areas. We have Barclays UK, which is a retail bank. That's That's the one that most people in the UK will have interacted with either through having a current account or insurance or some other product through through the retail bank there or with our um, retailers. So a lot of the terminals that you will go in and pay through, if you go into Sainsbury's or something like that, then then those those terminals are Barclay card terminals that you then then pay through. So a large part of our retail bank is is the customer focus bit, which where I was saying that there's 25 million customers in the UK that use use Barclays. But then the payments processing bit is also a very large part as well. So I think, roughly speaking, 70% of all payments that are processed go through Barclays systems. So that's that's that side of it. Um, there's then two other pieces to it. So we have um, Barclays Bank PLC, which is our investment bank and our corporate business um, that, that sits between the UK and the US. There's that side. And then there's a third part to it, which is called Barclays Execution Services, which is effectively like um, all the central functions and technology that supports those two other two other businesses. So that is that is what Barclays is. Roughly, I'm guessing 150,000 people employed, um, internal audit team of, of 600, 700, that kind of size. Thank you, Joe. Um, Caroline, just a quick overview, if you don't mind, please. There's a, there's a method in my madness here. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, well, we're the Irish post office, uh, but we're a lot more than that. Uh, the post office in Ireland is divided really into two core businesses. We have a, a retail business, which has the post office network, but also has a large arm of financial services that where we offer uh, banking products. Um, on the other side is the logistics, which is both mails and, and parcels. So we're, we're quite a hybrid as a business and uh, we've used data analytics across all of those businesses. Thank you, Caroline. So for the viewers today, I think you'll probably recognize a couple of things here, um, particularly from Caroline's thing to, side to begin with, all post. Yes, there's lots of other providers of these things nowadays, but mail parcels, we're all affected by that to some degree. Uh, from, from Joe's side, um, You've got the technology support. We've all got the technology support to some degree in every organisation, whether it's in-house, out-house or whatever. Um, but banking, well, we've all got a bank account. Uh, so there's relevance here. Um, there's also, as you touched on, Joe, a large retail network uh, and payment systems. Uh, so how, what percent, Joe, 70 odd percent of transactions go through your organisation at some point in time, payment systems rather. Um, that's huge. Every one of our organisations is connected to the payment system somehow. Um, so it's relevant what we're talking about today. The, the, chat, the guys may not give you a specific example about payments or whatever. They might do. Um, but it is absolutely relevant data analytics to every one of us and this connectivity across organisations, which you will see in a future uh, session that the data analytics working group will do with Joe and actually Caroline speaking on that. So I digress a little bit, but just to make a point about relevance. Um, going back to risk assessments in the audit cycle, if you don't mind, um, I don't know whether you started looking at risk assessments this year, Caroline, or is that something you brought in before this year? But either way, just looking for a little bit of understanding as to how you get that into the risk assessment process. Yeah. No, uh, this is the first year we, we introduced it. Um, and so that was the, the main area of the audit cycle that we wanted to, to really target. Um, so um, examples of where we've used it, uh, we've used it as risk assessment um, part of the post office network. So we would risk assess the post office network to decide what post offices say, for example, to visit and perform an audit program. And then on our more of our core audits um, as part of risk assessment, we're getting identifying various data sets that are relevant to a particular area or cycle, um, and we're we're analysing that. And we spent a lot of time at planning and doing that so that we really are identifying the the core risk areas. Because the business identifies the risk, but we have responsibility to auditors to do that piece ourselves. And data analytics has been really insightful and allowed us to really identify risks that nobody had considered previously and equally then determine how those risks are manifesting itself in the business because we can see it in the, in the data as opposed to having a worksheet to 
uh, with an auditee who may or may not know actually what's going on behind the scenes in the process. Thanks, Caroline. And I would assume from doing that work, the, fo the genetic focus of the audit, which might have been in somebody's mind before you start this, this activity, changes sometimes yeah. and definitely changes quite considerably. Absolutely. It's much more targeted and it, and it can really play well into that kind of agile approach to auditing where, you know, you're really getting made a sharp focus on what the, the key risks are and what the value will be for the, the board and, and the business. And so we're finding, you know, the outputs from our audits now are, are been really valuable to the business because it's bringing that insight and knowledge the business didn't have about what was going on in the processes previously. Thanks, Caroline. Joe, I, I take it you have the same view on, on life in terms of slotting it in at the very beginning of the cycle and maybe changing mindsets about what the audit was going to be about. Yeah, and maybe maybe even before, say, that scoping phase of the audit, we, mm. we focus quite heavily on um, what analytics we can do that will decide what gets onto our audit plan, right? So, so all the way up at, at that stage there. And and that's that's where we focus a lot of our automation in terms of getting information that's going to drive those decisions about our opinion on the inherent risk within our auditable universe. And, and to get, kind of bring that to, to life a little bit, that might be, say, for our suppliers to bring in information if new high-risk su suppliers are being, relationships are being created in the business to make sure that that gets through to the right auditor who's monitoring that that area of the business and can adjust their risk assessment due to that. Or it might be the changing technology landscape, or it might be changing customer numbers using particular products. But it's but it's making sure that that information gets through to the right person at the right time so that they can then decide if that's going to influence what they want to go and audit over the over the upcoming year. I see the other side to that is not just the inherent risk side, but we're actually helping with continuous monitoring to a certain extent too, where when the business is self-identifying issues or raising risk events, again, making sure they're getting rooted right to the right person who's interested in, in finding that out. And they don't rely on the business telling them, but but actually they're going to get that directly into their yeah, email to then find out about it as soon as it as soon as it happens. That's that's the intention. Thanks, Joe. Um, coming to the end of this first part of the, of the session, I'm just going to ask you to both to give me a score out of 10, if that's all right. And it doesn't, we're not going to measure you in the future, obviously, but auditors like numbers, don't we? If you're at a if you're at four or five last year, it doesn't matter what the scale is, where have you got to this year, Joe? Uh, yeah, it's a difficult question. <laughs> is is my boss up? watching this? Is this is that there? <laughs> but I, so it's so I don't know. We've we made a huge amount of progress in terms of embedding a lot of those areas. There's still a lot I want to do, and I think we'll talk about that a little bit further on as well. Yeah. So so considering there's a lot I want to do, we can't we can't be ten, can we? I'll, I'm going to go. We're at an eight. We still got work to do. We want to get to ten, um, but we made good progress. Yeah, we definitely have over the last year. Thanks, Joe. Sorry to put you on the back foot there. Um, Caroline, um, do you want to beat Joe? Do you want to equal Joe? Or where have you got to? Yeah, we're, we're nowhere where Joe and, and Barclays are, but we're we're at our own level for our own requirements, I suppose. We're probably around the six or a seven, but it's probably coming off the back of a three. So um, mm -hmm. it, it, I really feel that data analytics is now embedded within the internal audit team. It's just there is so much opportunity. You could never be a 10. You know, it's all the the area is constantly changing, and um, you know, we're constantly turned on to, to new possibilities and in terms of what we can do. Okay, thanks, Caroline. So, a quick theme reminder for everybody: if you're just joining us, welcome to our live stream, Talk to Internal Audit. Today's session is about data analytics. I'm speaking with Caroline Dern from Anpost in Ireland and Joe Morgan from Barclays, and we've just discussed the progress that's been made on DA over the last year. We're now going to turn to what, how this has been achieved. And we have touched on people, and that's the major thing here, isn't it? Um, so how has the team developed and the value that's DA derived as a result of that? We're also going to take a look at the future as well and what the next year or so might hold for both these individuals and their teams. So turning to how has progress been achieved, and I'm going to touch on people first. Uh, it's a people business. Every organisation has people. Um, and getting an auditor, helping an auditor to see the opportunities available through data analytics when we've talked to other people is always a challenge. Not being critical of anybody in the internal audit, 
but we've been doing it one way for a number of years and now we're getting some new opportunities, some of which we're not very comfortable about because we don't understand. Um, so Joe, if you don't mind going first, uh, again, you've been on the journey for a while, uh, but the last year's development, uh, how have you got the team and, and, and actually helped develop them even further over that period? Yeah, it's it's a really good question. And, and something that's been, been a huge focus for me is, is how do we build that population of auditors who have that capability to code? And, and why do I think that's really important? It's For me, it's because the auditor already knows the business. They already know what they want to achieve with their assurance. Um, we're, just, we're just trying to give them the skills to go and execute that and go, go and do it, rather than relying on somebody else who's got the technical expertise but might not know the business, might not know the controls, might not know the aim of that audit. Um, it kind of reduces that risk of things getting lost in translation between, between that handoff. So that's, that's been a real, real focus for us. Um, I think another bit that helps is, is, well, what about that population outside of that? So, so all the auditors who aren't going to do the coding themselves, they might not do the analytics themselves, but still a really core part of the story if we want to make sure we identify all the right opportunities and use analytics to the, to the right impact. One of, the, one of the ways I think we do, do that in Barclays is through our new entrance pathway when, when people join, join the team. And there's, there's a real heavy focus on kind of the, I'm going to call them the soft skills around analytics that, that are required for us to be, be successful. So that might be identifying opportunities. It might be about how do, you, how do you kind of know when your analytics test is coming to the right result and how can you have confidence in, in that result, but also how do you kind of explain the impact to your business partners and other bits and pieces like that. The other bit that I think really helps us is we do a, a half day of coding with everybody who joins the department. Even if you're an MD, you're going to come through that same new entrance pathway and you're going to, you're going to do that half day. And, and really what they are, they're group challenges. You'll be four or five of you trying to tackle some of these coding challenges. But, but all of them, even if they're not going to learn to code after that, after that day, are going to be working with colleagues who are trying to do analytics tests. So it's important for them to be able to kind of put themselves in their shoes and understand the challenges that they're facing in trying to get that test to work. And when they say, well, well, how long is it going to be till your, your script works and we've got some results, they'll understand why that individual may well not have a very clear answer to them. It may be in 10 minutes time when I've finished, finished with this particular error I'm trying to resolve, or, or there may be 50 more errors after that I've got to try and resolve and get, get to some answer. Um, so I think that really helps us just with that treating analytics as normal and everybody having some exposure to what it, what it's like to do data analytics helps us helps us change that dial. So very much a core skill, Joe, uh, yep. for the audit population. Um, I've talked to a number of uh, audit functions over the last year or so on, on this subject, and it's very, very interesting to see functions taking different approaches to this. Um, some will take exactly what you're talking about as a path for the team. Others will say, we've got a team in the center, which will do this and we'll meet at various points in the journey. Um, and to be, we'll be specialists and build our capability that way. Uh, and others will say, we'll, we'll gradually evolve this. We'll use the organization to help us train, train us on things that they do and how they do it. And we'll just gradually build over the next few years. And I think the main point here is there's no one size fits all for everybody. Um, but I will go back and say, when I joined internal audit, and you'll have the same view, I think, Caroline, and maybe yourself, Joe, from what you've seen. Um, if the boss knows what you're doing and how to do it, you have a better relationship than if the boss doesn't know what you're doing or how you do it. <laughs> so I think your point about um, the boss saying, why is the data not been available yet, is quite relevant, to be honest. Um, Caroline, how has it been for you, and how have you gone through that development journey? I know you're different. That's not negative. It's just different. Yeah. No, I mean, from a scale perspective, we're, we're a much smaller um, team. And um, but I'd be a very strong advocate of, of, of the people position. My, myself and Joe spoke on this topic before for the data analytics forum and how important building the team is and supporting data analytics. For us, when we when I started my journey in our post, we, we had an analyst on my team and, and an excellent analyst. But like that, sort of apart from the team and, and big um, move forward or enable our journey this year has been the, the integration of that analyst with the team. And what that's allowed is for the analyst to understand business and, and why we need it and for the auditors to understand the analytic skills. And that sharing of skill set is fantastic. And at the end of it, I now have a team of 
auditor slash analyst, where my analyst now has a question of the career development of whether he'd like to go on the journey to become an internal auditor. Um, and my internal auditors are extremely skilled in the use of the analytics tools we have. Um, what's also been very beneficial for us is, I suppose, the selecting uh, the, the tool um, we've considered whether we went with the standalone tool from um, an internal audit point of view or whether we're going to use the tools available in the business. And this was because we, we made the decision to use the tools available in the business. That has also accelerated our journey. And um, so it, it's just a combination of that decision and, you know, that cross contamination yeah. of skill sets between the analyst and the internal auditor that have been uh, led to our success. Thanks, Caroline. Uh, so if in order to join your teams today um, without the skill sets and we're given the skill sets to do whatever route you, you use, um, it's maybe an obvious question, but surely they're much more marketable as and when they leave the internal audit function. It's a real career development step here, isn't it? Uh, Joe, just I would think you're both going to say yes, but Joe, just a, a view to emphasise that, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, 100%, right? There's there's so much demand for people who know internal audit and know data analytics. That's actually one of the reasons why we chose to do this kind of homegrown talent route, because we've got loads of people who want to learn the skills, are enthusiastic to do it, and we've got great people who can teach that. So, so we, we kind of grow those auditor superheroes that can do everything our, ourselves. And you're right, they're more marketable, but it's just, it's just important that within the department, they're more marketable as well, right? That that we value those skill sets that gives them more opportunities for promotion and and we're kind of competing to keep them right we've got to have that same offering that that shows that we value those skills skills too so yeah we we're going to train them we're going to give them skills that make them more more marketable but um i mean it would be even worse if we didn't and they stayed right that's that's the that's the thing we're training isn't it you want to train them build the skills and then make them fantastic and hopefully they stay because you've got that offering and and they're more marketable inside as well yeah. So very much embedding core skills that you'll probably see in many, many jobs in the future. Um, but for, for us as an audit function, I'm saying us, for you as an audit function, it's a core skill, but it's also something that is beneficial for everybody going forward, to be honest. Caroline, echo, echo those views? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, we built a relatively new team over the last uh, year and a half, and um, they have had that opportunity to upskill in terms of data analytics on the job and it's led to a very collaborative spirit within the team and they've also seen the benefits coming out of their audits and the benefits with the business and it's given them that real sense of purpose so to be honest it's created a lot of fun in the team which you know it's great to train these people because there's always a fear that people will leave you but you're creating that collaborative fun atmosphere as a result of data analytics because they're really seeing purpose and what they're doing because they're bringing that insight which is what we all want to do when we, we come to work on Monday. Love that statement there, uh, having fun as an auditor. I don't know of many internal auditors will state that every day of the week. Um, but you've talked, you're starting to talk with the passion, both of you, to be honest. We love it because it's good and it's adding value everywhere and we can't really see a reason for not doing this. In fact, it's the opposite. We can see a very good reason for doing more of this as, as much as we possibly can. So the, the team dynamic then you've just described, uh, Caroline, has changed and it's possibly on a front foot more now than it used to be, more innovative, more challenging in, in a constructive sense. How could we do this? Could we do that, et cetera? I'm assuming it's absolutely the same for Barclays as, as, as well, Joe. But within the Barclays team, a much larger team, a much, much larger team, you obviously have to get that through a slightly different route. You need more people at the senior levels to be more enthusiastic or does it work differently if you need to get that level of enthusiasm yeah i mean it's it's got to go right right the way through hasn't it it absolutely does and and we're very fortunate to have that that kind of strong backing not only from the management within internal audit but our board audit committee as well fully expects us to be be doing this type of work and be be leading in analytics that's that's the buying that that we've got there um so part of the way we do this, so you're right, because there's there's a lot of people to ma manage. We we in, we have a data analytics working group within Barclays Internal Audit as well, and these are directors embedded across uh, different audit teams who are taking responsibility for audit delivery in their their areas, and that allows us to have a central team where we're sharing best practice and kind of 
communicating across different teams, but also that that local aspect to it as well, where where if you are delivering something on an audit, then you've got got a local leader who's kind of bought in to make sure that that's that's working too. So so absolutely, we've got to do got to do both. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much, the two of you. Um, talk a lot about team and the people there. Um, in terms of development um, of the function, and this is where you talk about your yourself, Caroline, as the boss, and where Joe talks about somebody else as the boss. Um, you, you, as the boss, it's, I'm using the word boss, obviously, as a very cheap word, I suppose. But as the boss, is, what's the responsibility on you, Caroline, to ensure this, this works as well as it can be? And how do you hold on to that and, and bring the focus to it all the time? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, we I, I said about forcing people to use data analytics. There has to be a little bit of that structure around it. So having your data analytics strategy, and I suppose we have targeted the use of data analytics in the continuous audit program. So it was very structured and people were forced to use a pink analytics. But as a result of getting them used to using analytics, the other bit came then where they used it on, on other pieces of audit work. Um, and then we brought the focus um, as well to our balanced scorecard, where we integrated the use of data analytics as something that we wanted to, to monitor and be able to um, explain back to our stakeholders, whether that was management or the ARC. And, um, you know, it, it, it has really driven it. So I think you, you have the structural stuff there in, in support. But I think when you see the value come out of the insights that you can bring to a business, that's the effect of it. That's the bit that's really led to the ripple effect. But I think you, you do need a combination of both. Yeah, carrot and stick. <laughs> um, being blunt. Joe, um, a word about the chief? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to speak for her. Definitely not. But I mean, I'll, I'll tell, tell a little bit about a few discussions we had when we were setting up the the internal audit strategy and um, we, we had some really interesting discussions around do we do we need data analytics as a separate part of that strategy or really are we just saying this is a core part of audit delivery right so where where we want to deliver higher quality audits two time that are relevant impactful all, the, all that kind of piece is that are you in effect saying data analytics through that right and and in the end we did choose to have have a separate part of it that that kind of had specific goals for analytics and what what we were trying to achieve through it but but with the with the kind of very clear line to say that that is only to support our ability to provide high impact assurance right that is that is our that is our connection and always got to be our north star um because really you don't need a separate analytics strategy it's it's all about how do you provide good good assurance and analytics is one of those one of those answers so again again getting around to that analytics as normal rather than as a specialist thing thing that we're doing thank you joe uh, no you shouldn't speak on behalf of the boss but i'm trying to draw some words out there um you talked about high impact caroline talked about fun um these are not necessarily new words to, to our vocabulary, but the potentially new words to some of our vocabulary in internal audits, well, quite often over the years, we've done cyclical audits, routine assurance, et cetera. This sounds different, doesn't it? High impact, fun, um, audit committees looking for things, clients coming back to you. So there's a change in the dynamic, I think, in the relationship that you're describing to me, and that's what I'm picking up anyway. Is that fair to say, is it audit committee, well, I think they are based on your, what you said, Joe, on board, chasing, in a constructive sense, is the executive the same place? Have they had that epiphany, as I've called it in the past, that they suddenly say, wow, uh, this actually can make that difference, so let's have more of it. Caroline, does that resonate for you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the audit committee is always the friend of internal audit. Your, your tougher stakeholder is often the business, and um, for us, that's been the real game changer. So we've moved out of that compliance mindset into the more advisory and the data analytics has been the, the tool to get us there. And that's where we've been able to position into that role as trusted advisor with the business because we're bringing them val valuable understanding of their areas where they can achieve maybe cost efficiencies, capacity savings, but actually it allowed us to shine a better light of control because actually when you look at the root cause of why some of the problems develop, often you lead back to control, which is a message for the business and the ARC are interested in hearing. So um, it's, it's 
kind of satisfied both their stakeholders equally. That's very much a change in dynamic, I think. Joe, same from your perspective, I think. Yeah, very, very much. And I think, I think what the the bit they really appreciate is that assurance at scale, right? We've got we've got so many processes that operate in very high volumes, but equally they're critically important that they happen every single time, right? And that's that's what analytics is able to give us. We're able to look at these these populations that are very, very large and not just say that it's probably all working, but to say we checked every single one and we know it's all working. That is that is incredibly valuable and appreciated by the business and, and audit committee and, and I think regulators and others as well when, when we're able to do that. Thanks for that, Joe. Uh, made an awful lot of sense to me, so very good for that. Thank you very much. Uh, when I would return to the, the future and what the next year holds for us all, um, difficult year in a general sense for the environment, the, the world we live in just now, and data analytics clearly has a very, very key role to play going forward on every topic, that every audit function is involved in. So if we could just spend a few minutes, Joe and Caroline, just considering what is DA for the next 12 years for you? What are you going to do? How are you going to develop the team? Where do you see adding, where do you see yourselves adding extra value over the course of the next 12 months? Caroline, do you have any initial views on that? Yeah, I suppose, uh, Derek, we're heading into re-looking at our IT strategy. We, we had put in place a uh, three-year strategy and we've done very well in terms of um, making headway into that, but we're now looking afresh what the next three years are going to hold for us. Um, in particular, I suppose we want to grow the piece with continuous auditing where data analytics is a key enabler for us. So we're looking to um, go and uh, add different processes to, to that piece because uh, we've had great success in that in terms of saving from a resourcing point of view an internal audit so that we could, you know, do other pieces of work. Um, also, i um, very curious to explore um, the area of process mining, which is a relatively new area in data analytics, and think it uh, could be a very, very valuable tool for us and the business as we explore some kind of large uh, back uh, office processes where we're looking to really approach them from a much more efficiency point of view, from an auditing perspective. But equally, there could be great learnings in terms of efficiencies coming out of that for the business. So we're really partnering with business there and exploring the use of some really uh, good process mining tools in the future. Um, but also paramount for us has been able to not only um, show value, but prove value. So we're looking at uh, you know, how we're really going to track what we're doing with data analytics in terms of key performance indicators and, and how we report that back in through the, through the board and the audit committee. So that's really kind of our focus for the next 12 months. Thanks, Caroline. Just going to pick up on that last point for a second. You talk about KPIs. Any thoughts in terms of crystallizing that 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 process just now? Any examples of what you're thinking is? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the things we we track is um, we're very keen to show that the continuous auditing piece uh, can be used across a number of processes. So we're tracking how many processes we're we're able to to build and and deliver in in the year. But equally, you know, as we build those processes, we build them out initially um, in an Excel-based model, and then we transition them to our, our Oracle tool. So we kind of automate the, the process when we get happy that it's uh, we're doing the right thing in the area. So we, we, we measure how many we translate to the Oracle tool and how many we get done in the year. Fantastic. And just on the people perspective, Caroline, the team, um, any thoughts for them or by them about how they want to see the, the personal development plan come to pass over the next year? Yeah, uh, one of the things they're, they're very keen to do is um, work with the analyst on our team. So the analyst on our team um, is the specialist when it comes to the Oracle tool and the general auditors on the team um, are very anxious uh, to have regular workshops with him um, where he brings them through some of the functionality in, in the tool, but equally some of the data sets. So they'll meet regularly on particular data sets and uh, you know you have that cross collaboration of understanding on the data set. And then you know really they're feeding those ideas back into us when we look at our plan at you know the various junctions during the year for a refresh mm -hmm. perspective. Great Caroline that's that's great because I think what you're describing is a team that's quite getting closer and closer together on the subject. Yeah. Um, so as Joe might reflect in a minute, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but when the subject starts, you have two teams effectively, you have the data people, and then you have the people doing 
the actual auditing work and you try to bring that that whole team together um <coughs> excuse me a second um so we're, we're going to turn to joe in a second and uh, just basically the same questions joe clearly a bigger team clearly a bigger organization in total so i would imagine there's a huge variety of uh, development going on in the teams uh, in the broadest sense but also some specific areas of focus for you over the next year just want to elaborate on that joe yeah, sure. Yeah. So for us, it's very much a story of continuing to embed analytics as, as just a normal approach for, for auditing. And, and for us, really, there's two. And, and in particular, it's about how do we constantly raise the expectations for the entire department? Right. If we if we expect them to be able to use analytics on every single order or whenever they need to, then we've got to make sure we're equipping them with with the right right skills there. We're also also going to be launching a program that's targeted at our leadership, um, our auditors in in leadership roles, because a lot of them haven't um, written code themselves or delivered the hands on analytics themselves, but are now managing a team where that's inc incredibly important. Um, so we're trying to equip them with the skills of how do they how do they recruit and identify in potential candidates what are the important skills for them and their their audit team and um, how do they spot people who are doing great analytics within their team and, and kind of help them progress and kind of prioritize prioritize those those skills as well the other side of this is what i call our expanding capabilities work stream which is again targeting some of those areas that are quite hard to provide assurance in using analytics and the two that we're particularly focusing on at the moment is these kind of manual judgmental decision making processes and how we can use machine learning and clustering algorithms to to really understand these decisions that are being made at scale and and give the auditor the information they need to apply their their own judgment as to which areas of that kind of stand out to them the most and where they might want to focus their their testing um, another area in kind of along the same same line is in analyzing free text there's there's lots of free text that's being generated um, by the organization whether or not that's notes about a customer or notes about a technology change that's being made um, and trying to make the techniques to analyze that free text much more accessible to our auditors so it's not a huge piece of work for them to to go and analyze it but something they can do just out of curiosity on that on that free text that they are receiving. Thanks, Joe. I find this whole data subject immensely enjoyable because it's a journey of discovery for me. Uh, <clears throat> so I hear phrases and words, etc., which I haven't heard before, and I always have to ask straight away, Joe, you just said clustering algorithms. What the heck is a clustering algorithm? So this is, um, I mean, in salesperson talk, right, we're talking about machine learning here. So it's, um, but I mean, in reality, what it's doing is um, looking at a data set and comparing similarities or differences between it. So um, a very common one would be, would generate decision trees out the other side of it. And effectively what that algorithm is gonna do is it's gonna look at a population of data. You will tell it a factor that you're interested in and it will say, okay, well, um, I'm gonna to continue to split this population into groups that are the most different to it, different as possible. So if I, if I pick a practical example, um, the what influences the price of a car, for example, um, you tell the, the machine learning algorithm that you're interested in price, you give it all the different factors of the mileage, the type of car it is, the, um, I'm going to show how little I know about cars here, but all the different factors about car, cars that would relate to it, but you don't have to tell it which ones are important, right? You just give it the data and it will start to split them. So, so it will most likely split on mileage initially as one of the main factors to decide on what the price of a car is going to be and then continue to build that tree out for you in an audit context right what that's allowed you to do is really understand the decision making behind pricing a car and what are the key factors in pricing a car and to an auditor that might stand out to you as something that's unusual that you wouldn't expect to see in that decision making process and then direct your testing towards that equally you could just choose to to look at cars that are priced out of line to that typical model that was built. And again, that might focus your testing into more unusual areas again. Does that help, Derek? It does, thank you very much, Joe. And I'm just probably giving you an example to everybody who's watching today. 
don't feel free to ask questions on this subject. It is a voyage of discovery. If you don't know something, please ask. There's always somebody happy to answer the question. Joe, thank you for being happy to answer the question, despite being put on the spot there. Um, so quite a lot to come over the next year. Um, and you've both had your journeys, uh, and you've both got massively different teams, uh, and the development challenges have been different for you as well. Um, I'm going to turn just for a second to the word collaboration uh, and the value uh, of working with others and comparing notes and, and benefiting from others' experiences. So what value comes from collaboration as, as far as you're concerned, whether it's in the team, outside the team, our data working group, for example, a perspective on collaboration, Caroline? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be on my analytics journey other than for, for collaboration. So, you know, hearing at various IAA conferences, things other people were doing data analytics, been interested, you know, going forward, asking them a question about it over coffee at a breakout session, you know, or whether that's attending um, conferences where data analytics um, has been on the agenda. And um, that, that's all been really important in allowing me, you know, choose areas of data analytics we wanted to get involved in, and in particular, you know, the piece that we do around continuous auditing. Um, but equally, it's, you know, at our DA group uh, where I learned about process mining and, um, you know, and that's, I think, going to be really valuable for our business going forward as well. But, you know, that's outside with the profession, but I think collaboration also with, within the company is very important. Um, you know, analytics is a developing area, not only in internal audit, but obviously in, 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 in mainstream. And we're learning lots as we go and have conversations with the business uh, and, you know, have conversations with the analysts ac across uh, on post. Um, and I encourage the analysts on my team to, to reach out to the other analysts to understand what they're doing in their areas and whether, you know, that gives us ideas for future audits or whether we can leverage off pieces of work they're doing. And it's, it's been a really interesting journey over the last 12 months um, through that collaboration as well. Apologies, I've kept myself on mute once again. Um, Joe, a perspective from you on the word collaboration, please. Yeah, I mean, it's it's incredibly important. I think that this this industry is changing so quickly and, and actually there's a lot of technology out there, analytics technology that might be used in other industries that actually doesn't help audit very much. So it's it's useful for us to have a group like this where we can talk about, well, what technology that's available is actually really applicable to providing assurance because that answer is much harder to get, right? And is constantly changing over, over time as well. So, so I massively appreciate the collaboration within that working group and being able to hear about what, what others are doing. It's, it's very interesting. Great. Just recently, um, I had a number of interactions with different audit functions as I usually do on various subjects. But on data analytics, a couple of interactions were, were from the perspective of we're trying to convince ourselves as a team that we should do this. We need to find some justification for doing data analytics. And as we chatted around the subject for a while, at the head of audit, being, being open and honest, said, I've actually been trying to find an excuse for not doing data analytics, probably because I didn't understand the value. Um, so the reason I'm mentioning this just now is the word collaboration was in the discussion. I was talking about why don't you join our group? Because everybody in that group is ideally, hopefully, helping each other get better at data analytics, and nobody wants to go back to where they were. I think that's the third time I mentioned this now in this, this call. Um, so the reality is join, because you can talk to people who might have a similar mindset a year ago, but will now be saying, no, it's good, and here's an example of what worked for me. And I think, Caroline, you've been basically saying that a couple of times here. You went to a presentation at an audit conference, and because of that, you were inspired to do something. That, that's fair, isn't it, Caroline? Oh no, absolutely, and 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 hearing the passion about other, from other people that have been on the journey, you know, and you know, we we have to move out of our comfort zone. It's 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 very easy to approach an audit plan the same way you approached it year in year out, or audits a particular area is the same way you've always approached them. But but if we really believe in bringing value from the work we do, we have to be prepared to to say maybe there's a different way of doing things, you know, um, and you know, just be prepared to change. Yeah. Thank you, Caroline. Um, my last pipe part of the discussion this afternoon, I'm just picking up four bullet points that, that tend to come to me on a fairly regular basis. Uh, <clears throat> and these are the bullet points of challenges to why we should. Um, I'm going to just read 
read a few of them out just now. It's too great an investment of our time. In brackets, we've got an audit plan to deliver, and it interrupts that. Um, it's too great an investment of money. In brackets, we've got other th things to spend it on. Um, we don't have the skills, and um, we're not being asked to do so, so it isn't a priority. Uh, not necessarily asking you to pick up in them all, uh, Caroline and Joe, but you want to pick on one or two and just have a response to that. Joe, first, if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I'm very fortunate to have a very supportive leadership um, that's, that's interested in doing more and more analytics and really sees the value of it. It's, it's difficult if, um, if you've never seen that value, though, to, I guess, to make that case or to see, see the case. So for, with a lot of those, those bullet points there, actually, you can start very small, right? It's, it's very likely that you have access to Microsoft Office and can do analytics within Excel. Um, and start to get some of those results from full population testing and be able to really clear this, clearly see the impact of um, your findings because you're not talking in terms of items within a sample, but you're talking within full populations and be able to quantify the, the impact of your, your results. No longer is it negotiating those issues because you're trying to say what the impact of them is or what the scale of them is because you know, you know what the scale of it is. Um, so I, I would encourage those people who are battling with those those challenges is to start small, start with what you you know, like Excel and other bits and pieces like that, rather than going directly for the, the complex pieces. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Caroline, do you want to add anything onto that? Really, I just want to echo it as well. It is about starting small and, uh, you know, most uh, internal audit departments use Excel at, in, in this day and age and um, people have the skill set around Excel um, and whether it's building on those Excel skills um, and perfecting those throughout the team. But, you know, there's an awful lot you can do with Excel. It, it's just a change in the mindset. And as soon as you see the fact that you can see across a whole population and, you know, like Joe said, it cuts out all the arguments because it's very factual based. It's, it's on the page and um, it does make our lives easier as auditors. Um, and as a result, you're, you're buying yourself efficiency uh, and time saving you know which is contrary to to the belief there you echoed which is you know data analytics is a cost Caroline, thank you very much and, and joe thank you very much for your time today uh, we're going to wrap up just now uh, you've been watching talk to internal audit today we spoke about data analytics or da uh, i was joined by caroline derham from anpost and joe morgan from barclays and we spoke about the progress that's been made on da over the last year how it's been achieved, how the team has developed, the value that DA has delivered, and we've also looked into the future and predicted what we might achieve over the coming year. Our next session is in the works at the moment, but we'll be sharing more information about that in the coming weeks. For those ex interested in expanding your knowledge on data analytics and your experience, we offer the following resources that might be of interest to you. We have training courses. We've got data analytics for auditors and data security. We've got technical guidance, and there's a range of that on our web pages. But, uh, but I would suggest we've also got probably the most important thing is the Data Analytics Working Group, where we now, as of very, very recently, we've passed 240 uh, audit functions involved in that from all sectors and all geographies, and well over 350 people from these audit teams involved in this. They're only part of that group because they see the value in talking with each other and collaborating and listening to each other as well. So for any of those examples are given there and you want to get involved, just please contact us. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Thank you again to Caroline and to Joe, and we'll speak soon. Thanks for watching Talk to Internal Audit.